Tales from the Future, Horsewoman from the Future, from the book by Vladimir McGrath, Who Are We, translated by Marion Schwartz. I saw a wagon from a settlement, or rather a carriage with its top down, harnessed to a chestnut horse. An elderly woman sat on the carriage, soft seat, a basket of apples and vegetables in front of her. Up front, a shirtless boy of about seven held the reins. But he wasn't guiding the horse. This was probably not the first time they had made their trip, and the horse was trotting down a familiar route. The boy turned to the elderly woman and said something to her. The grandmother smiled and began to sing. The child joined in, picking up the refrain. Tourists passing and electric buses could scarcely have heard their song. The horse was running down the road about a kilometer from the highway. Nearly all the tourists look at the people in the carriage through binoculars, holding their breath as if it were miracle or extraterrestrials, and once again, I thought that what that this wasn't working out quite right, quite right. People were coming from distant countries, but could not interact normally with those whom they had come to see. They could only observe from afar. And the two in the carriage weren't even looking in their direction. One of the buses slowed down and proceeded in parallel with the speed of the trotting horse. Sitting in this bus was a group of foreign children. They waved at the grandmother and grandson, riding in the distance in their handsome carriage, or rather to the boy, but he did not even glance in their direction once. Suddenly, a young horsewoman appeared from the handsome flat field living gates of the settlement. Her fast bay began catching up to the carriage at a swift gallop. Pulling even, the heated horse began prancing alongside. The elderly woman smiled and listened to what the young horseman was telling her. The boy dissatisfied, probably with the interruption and the singing, but still with hidden joy said, didactically. What a fidget you are, Mama. You can't stay alone for a minute. The young woman laughed, took a turnover out of the canvas sack tied to her saddle and held it out to the boy. He took it, bit it in, into it, and then, with the words, Try it, Grandma. It's still nice and warm. Held the turnover out to the elderly woman and pulling on the reins. Stop the carriage. The boy leaned over, picked a basket filled with handsome apples, up with two hands, held it out to the rider and said, please, Mama, take this to them. And his eyes pointed toward the, the halted bus of foreign children, lightly grabbing the heavy basket of apples with one hand and giving her prancing steed a light slap on the neck. The young horsewoman dashed toward the bus of children. By that time, several more buses had, buses had stopped next to the children, and their passengers were ecstatically watching the rider race across the meadow holding a basket of apples. She flew up to the children who had spilled out of the bus, rein in her horse, deftly bent down, and without getting out of the saddle, placed a basket of apples before the ecstatic children. She also managed to put a swarthy little boy on, on the head, wave and greeting to all, and head her steed right down the middle of the highway. The bus driver announced over his portable radio, she's racing right down the median strip. She's beautiful. Many tourist buses pull off onto the highway shoulder and stop. The people quickly got out of the bus and line up along the road, holding their breath 
We watched a young beauty riding at a swift gallop, not an exclamation, but a whisper, admi ad but a whisper of admiration tore from many lips, and there was something to admire. Her hot steed racing in a swift gallop threw up sparks from its hoovers. No one was chasing it. The woman riding it did not have a whip or even a twig, but the steed kept picking up its swift pace. Its hooves barely touched the road and its mane fanned out in the oncoming wind. It must have wanted to be worthy of the beauty riding it. Her outward beauty was unusual. Of course, one could admire it, but her regular facial features and her dark blonde braid and her thick eyelashes, of course, under her embroidered white blouse and skirt and white daisies, one could clearly imagine the taut, chiseled torso of her magnificent figure. The flowing feminine lines of her entire figure seemed to frame an indefatigable energy. The flush playing on her cheeks radiated the grandeur and indomitable possibilities of this mysterious energy. The young looking rider stood out from the people standing at the side of the road with her unusual healthy look. She sat on her hot steed without the slightest tension. She was not even holding onto the palm or rain, palm over reins, and she had not put her feet, which were thrown to one side of the horse rump, into the stirrups. Lowering her eyelashes, she rebraided her hair, which had come slightly undone into a tight braid with smooth movements of her hand. Sometimes the beauty raised her eyelashes, and when her gaze seems to sink <clears throat> with an invisible pleasant fire, one of the people in the crowd, the person who met the, that gaze, seemed to straighten up visibly, became taller. People seemed to catch with their feelings the light and energy emanating from the rider and attempt to fill up with it, at least partially. She understood their desire, graciously shared, and she raced forward and she was beautiful. Suddenly, a temperamental Italian ran out on the road to intercept the, the speeding horse, spread his arms out and exclaimed ecstatically, Voshea a lufio voshea. The rider neither shredder nor took fright when her horse reared and pranced in place. She just grabbed the pommel of her saddle with one hand, with the other tore a flower from the wreath adorning her head and threw it to the Italian. He caught the gift, pressed it carefully to his chest as if it were the greatest treasure, constantly repeating, Mamma mia, mamma mia. But the beauty wasn't looking at the ardent Italian. She touched the reins of her stead, and the horse moved, dancing lightly toward the people, standing on the shoulder. The crowd parted, and the young ride, rider lightly jumped from her horse and stood opposite a woman who looked like European and was carrying a little girl. The little girl was asleep, the slightly round shoulder mother with a pale face and tired eyes, was having a hard time holding her, trying not to disturb the child's sleep. The rider stopped opposite the woman and smiled at her. The two women, the two mother's eyes met. You could tell how different the two women and her states were. The despondency of the mother holding her child made her resemble a fading flower next to the young woman who had approached her and whose appearance was associated with the infatigable exuberance of the flowering of thousands of gardens. The two women looked into each other's eyes silently and suddenly as, it, as if aroused by some new awareness, the mother holding the sleeping girl stood up straight 
and a smile appeared on her face, which smooth, unusual, graceful, feminine movements of her hands. The Russian removed the pretty wreath from her head and put it on the mother's head. They did not say a single word to each other. Lightly jumping into the saddle of the horse, standing calmly nearby, the beautiful rider once again rushed forward. For some reason, the people applauded her and the now smiling slender woman holding her now awakened, smiling little daughter watch her go. And the ardent Italian tearing off an expensive wristwatch ran after her and shouted, a souvenir, Mamma Mia, but the beauty was already far away. Her dashing horse turned off the road onto a platform where tourists were sitting at long tables, drinking kavas and fruit drink, and trying some other dishes as well, which waiters served to them from a handsome carved wooden house. Yet another building was being completed nearby. Two men were laying a handsome carved frame around the window of the new building which was probably a store or a restaurant. Hearing the clicking of hooves, one of the men turned toward the approaching rider, said something to his comrade, and leaped from the scaffolding. The ardent beauty rain in her horse, jumped to the ground, quickly untied the canvas bag from her saddle, ran toward the man, and shyly held out the bag to him. Turnovers, apple turnovers, like you like, still warm. You are such a fidgeter. A katrika, the man said gently. Eating a turnover out of the bag and screwing his face up from pleasure. The tourists sitting at the table stopped eating and drinking to admire the lovers. That is how this man and this young beauty who had just jumped from her hot stead, steed stood in front of each other, as if they weren't man and wife at all, as if they did not have children, but were ardent lovers. The beauty who had just galloped 15 kilometers under the admiring gaze of the tourists and who had seemed omnipotent and as free as the wind stood shyly in front of her beloved looked up at him, and then lowered her lashes shyly. The man suddenly stopped eating and smiled. Ekratanak, Ekratanaka, look. There's a wet spot on your blouse. That means it's time to feed the Mishka. She covered <clears throat> the small wet spot on her milk-filled breast with her hand and replied shyly, I'll be there in time. He is still asleep. I'll do everything in time. Then hurry. I'll be home soon too. We're already finishing out work. Look, do you like it? She glanced at the windows decorated with carved frames. Yes, I like it very much. I also wanted to tell you something. Speak. She came right up to her husband and stood on tiptoe, stretching up to his ear. He leaned over, listening closely, and she quickly kissed his cheek and without turning around, hopped in the saddle of her horse standing next to her. The beauty's happy cascading laughter merged with the clicking of hooves. She sped, she sped home, not down the asphalt road, but across the meadow grass. All the tourists were still watching her go. And what was so special about this young woman galloping across the meadow on her dashing steed? This mother of two children, yes, she was beautiful. Yes, she brimmed over with energy. Yes, she was good. But why do all the people watch her go so unwaveringly? 
Might this not be simply a woman speeding across a meadow on a horse? Might this be materialized happiness rushing home to feed her infant and greet her, greet her beloved husband? The people are admiring happiness racing home.